The man in Manio diligently stands watch, immortalizing the unwavering will of humanity. Many pass by, some unaware of the tremendous acts of bravery and perseverance by Richard B. Etheridge. Black history, this is American history. It should not be confined to just recognizing it on Black History Month. So I say that as loud as I can possibly say it and encourage everyone to think about that. Born into slavery shortly before the Civil War, Etheridge would find his way out and eventually into battle, fighting for the Union. His time in war includes the battle at Newmarket Heights, all while advocating for civil rights on Roanoke Island. After the war, Etheridge joined the Body Island Life Saving Station at the lowest rank. White and black Americans worked side by side, uncommon at the time. They were called checkerboard stations or stations with checkerboard crews. Etheridge was educated, able to read and write, and proved his worth as an agile surfman. In 1880, it was recommended he become the keeper at Pea Island. So he rises from the lowest in rank to the highest in rank. The blacks that are there remain, and then Etheridge gets a couple of blacks that were at other stations, and that's in essence how the all-black P Island crew is established. His team became the first all-black life-saving crew. This would lead to what he is perhaps best known for, the rescue of the E.S. Newman crew on October 11th, 1896. In a full-blown hurricane, the waves were as high as a three-story building. The wind was so loud that you couldn't hear the person standing next to you. Blown a hundred miles off course, the vessel with nine people is caught up in the storm, shipwrecked. Captain S.A. Gardner fires off a flare. He knew of the life-saving station, and this was the only hope of being rescued. They took out the Lyle gun, it sank because of the muck and the mire and the water. They couldn't use the boat, they couldn't use the Lyle gun, something had to be done. Etheridge and his team took a chance on something no other life-saving crew had ever tried. They tied the ropes around themselves, they tied them to each other, they extended them back so that the other men could hold on. The surfmen swam out to the ship amid hurricane conditions. Even at this point in history, the Newman's passengers did not care who rescued them. In life or death situations, race is not a factor. The captain's wife gives the surfmen their three-year-old daughter. Then, one by one, the rest are brought to shore. All nine lives were rescued. What started at 9 p.m. ended at 1 a.m. Captain Gardner went out there. Everything was gone. His vessel was destroyed. This was supposed to be a regular run. I'm sure he thought about how he could have lost the lives of his family, his crewmen, and himself. The only thing that remained is the signboard, the E.S. Newman. During the lives of Etheridge and his team, they would never be recognized for such an incredible feat of strength and bravery. Not until a hundred years later, when Etheridge was posthumously given the gold life-saving medal by the U.S. Coast Guard. I mean, I, I think the reality is because they were a black crew. Put it this way, if you look at the historical record, and this, including the historical record of people who have been awarded gold life-saving medals on the Outer Banks. Yeah. You know, there's some images where they see them proudly on their chest. You know, that didn't happen for Richard Etheridge and his crew. Uh, I mean, I think at that time, and you know, they're just kind of this, to me, these, you know, unknown heroes that really, if you think about it, are the true heroes of the Outer Banks, given when they lived and um, what was happening at that time. William Dorman Pugh, that would be my connection. Descendants of the surfmen now run and maintain the Pea Island Cookhouse Museum. Painting of my father who, de who helped decommission the station in 1947. Preserving things like payroll documents from that very life-saving crew. Richard Etheridge Keeper, J.H. Berry. Capture, keep, save moments because they get lost so easily. They work to ensure the story of Richard Etheridge is passed down to the next generation. I don't think it's talked about enough. I think it should be talked about more. 
and I think it's crazy about how LeBron James could be like the number one player. And everybody know LeBron James, but nobody know Richard Etchard. Joan Collins says the incredible rescue of the Newman does not alone define the team's legacy. Enduring slavery, the Civil War, fighting for rights, and fighting to save countless lives at sea. Collins believes they are significant to American history. The story of the E.S. Newman, I think, rescue is, a, is an incredibly wonderful story, you know, as are other stories. But I always say, don't let those stories also cause you not to even think about what their lives must have been like at that time.